good afternoon. Welcome to the land of Janthir. This is my first ever review, I believe, from a Guild Wars product or an ArenaNet product, but I wanted to do a review on Janthir Wild's release because it is something that I really love and I want to share just how good it is. So with that said, bear with me. Let's get into it. So Guild Wars 2 Janthir Wilds brings a host of amazing new features to the game. Probably the biggest and most notable one is the spear weapon that has been spread across all professions. So every profession has the spear now. I'm going to sip some coffee like my character real quick. Oh, I just can't get over this emote. This might look like a little bit of a paradox, but my character is talking at the same time I am. And the voice is coming out of both of them. Wink, wink. This is me. This is my avatar. So I've had some good memories playing this expansion. Notably, being able to finalize and finally get all of my legendary PvE gear. That is a first for me. And that's super exciting. And the... Hey, get out of my frame, idiot. This... Uh, this is a bear, man. They have no manners. That's what you get when you grow up and live in a place that has no contact with the outside world. You just don't know how to act around other people. So back to the expansion. The new content really motivated me to get out there, do more rifts, because rifts is another feature that comes with this expansion. New types of rifts in this expansion with different enemies. Oh, finally. Finally something. This is something I complained about with SOTO, SOTO, Secrets of the Obscure. All of the repeated enemies from previously. Finally, we have some new things to fight and they are the focus of the rifts and they are so different. They are very different from other monsters and it's so refreshing and amazing and I love it and being able to make use of the war claw which is another thing that's been reworked and basically added into pve in this expansion you can use that in the rifts to help you out now, as i said before i kind of glazed over it but every profession has the spear now even the ranger and i've got it right here oh yeah that's my butt <laughs> so there's the there's the spear Okay, look, I'm going to have an entirely different video on the spear situation, uh, particularly for the untamed, or the ranger, because that's my main. That's what I play. And yeah, I have some thoughts on it. I'm not going to get into all my thoughts on all the spears. I don't have many thoughts on the spears. My main thoughts are on the ranger spear. So we'll, we will gloss over that. But that is one of the new features that came to this expansion or that came with the expansion. And it's a really nice addition. Not gonna lie, I like playing with it, but again, I have thoughts, as many other people do. Many other creators I've seen making their thoughts known. And it's good. It's good for ArenaNet to see that and to reflect on our thoughts and make changes to them. Uh, well, not make changes to our thoughts, but make changes to the spears once we speak about our thoughts. Anyway, we've talked about the spears. Next, we can talk a little bit about the War Claw. Now, they've totally reworked, and, and not only reworked, but added skills here, or at least added skills that I didn't know about to PvE. Maybe these skills existed in World vs. World? I think maybe this may have? This, I'm pretty sure, did not. This did. This did. And that did. So yeah, they, I mean, I don't know what exactly they they added or brought over from World to World because I never played World to World. But what we have in PVE, this is what pertains to you. These skills here, they've added five, or they have five skills for us to use, and the War Claw, or should I say Journeykin, which is what the Lowland Coden call themselves. I call these guys. <laughs> okay, Lowland Coden are separate <laughs> from the Journeykin. But the thing is, this area is inhabited by Journeykin, which are these things, which used to be War Claws. The area is also inhabited by Lowland Coden, which you probably are well aware of, and you saw before, but the entire area is just the bears. It's all bears. It's brown bears, I'm assuming. You have this Journeykin, you have this skill called Sniff, and what it does is kind of scan around you in an area 
it shows you allies enemies and chests if you're looking for loot and uh, you're exploring this this is amazing it encourages so much more exploring because there's randomized chests everywhere and it's just so much more fun to run around and just randomly use this skill and find a chest and you're like oh my god there's one here yes i found one it's just so much more exciting to run around and just see a randomized chest somewhere in the previous expansions and you know and any other part of the game i believe there is nothing like this there is nothing like where you can go explore and find a random chest except maybe for one of the fractals but that's neither here nor there because it's like stuck in a fractal and you only do that when you're in the fractal it's not like you're in open world and running around and collecting things as you go i'm editing right now and i just wanted to clarify something really quickly now thinking back i do realize other areas of the world do have chests that are randomized and you can find them in different places like trade contract chests i believe and hamsin chests and jade chests as well from end of dragons but they don't have quite the same impact as they do in this new janthier wilds expansion perhaps one of the biggest reasons why is because in the janthier expansion the war claw has an active skill that you use and it encourages you to use that skill to find stuff in path of fire or end of dragons you can run around and see a chest that is there and Perhaps it's not even randomized, it's just normally there, such as bleach bone, beach, beached, bleached bones, <laughs> holy shit, bleached bones, and then also the jade chests. I don't know how random those were, and perhaps these aren't super random as well, but you can't tell that they were there or, or recognize that they were there. And I'm ta not talking about the major Coden caches, I'm talking about the randomized ones that you actually dig up with your war claw. And that is a specific skill that you're using. It encourages you to use your war claw and go and find that stuff. And when you find it, you're like, whoa, that's awesome. Let's collect that and find another one. But yes, the war claw or the journey kin, as I should say, is a very fun new mount that they've totally reworked for PVE. It's just so much more enjoyable to roam around and explore. They've brought back exploration, everyone. They've they've done it so by now you're probably noticing that i have a lot of positive things to say so far except for maybe the fact that i kind of alluded to the spear not being too good for the untamed but there's a good reason for that and the reason is i'm gonna get rid of him because he keeps making noise the reason is enough, enough. oh oh my god Oh my god. What? I see the triviality of Tyrian politics has not ceased its endless parade. Whoa. Shall we have a mature discussion? The story in this game and the progression that you go through to get through just the, you know, what's happening with the world, it is really good it is what can i say it's almost if not exactly equal to the level of the season four story with palawa joko i believe that was one of the that's one of the best stories to date the guild wars has done this story is pretty much on that level and it has some mind-blowing reveals and explosive stuff that you not not literal explosions but it has some stuff that you just go whoa i didn't see that coming and that was really cool and i think one of the biggest things that i love about this expansion is the story i think i maybe said that in the very beginning but that is one of the main purposes i play guild wars 2 is for the story and when they let me down on the story it's just like no why like why am i Sometimes I think, like, why am I playing this? What am I playing this for? But then I remember, they're going to make a comeback at some point. They're going to do it. And they've done it here. They've done it. They've brought it back. They've brought the story back to a good good place. What you see here are bears working in the field. This entire area is pretty much all bears. 
these bears, as I said before, the Lowland Coden. The Lowland Coden are the main characters in the story. And there is a secret character. We've got a character that's playing as another character in here. And you learn about her. Her name is Waiting Sorrow, and you learn about her in Secrets of the Obscure. The very cool thing about this expansion is that they've built upon stuff from Secrets of the Obscure, so it wasn't a waste of time to play that. You go through that story and you're like, oh my god, it's related! Yes! Yes! Wait, whoa! Yes, it's related! Oh my god! And they bring back some characters that we really love, like Kaith. Kaith is back. I wanted to see more of Kaith. I think I've been missing Kaith in, in the story. Look, maybe this is an unpopular opinion, but I was getting bored and annoyed of Taimi. No offense to the actor who plays her or, you know, the writing or anything. It's not like I'm saying it's a bad character, but it could have been better. And it was getting annoying and a little bit on my nerves just hearing Taimi all the time say commander commander you know just always in our ear trying to tell us something and then Gorik as well was kind of getting getting annoying you know sometimes in i think in previous expansions they've included too much stuff that didn't need to be there and this expansion has the right amount of stuff the right amount of story like the right amount of dialogue really good dialogue by the way really good reveals i am very impressed by how the oh there's someone gathering uh cabbage i should probably do that there's a there's a wizard vault weekly to gather stuff should be doing that i'll do it after this so yes a uh, good character progression i would say also there was good kind of like tension and setups and i can't i can't overstate how good the reveals are for me were for me as i was playing through i just there was stuff that i just did not expect at all and here's okay here's something i said at the very beginning here's something i said not at the beginning of this video but at the beginning before they released this i think i wrote on a forum or i wrote somewhere maybe a youtube video comment or something like that i wrote something and i said yes finally they are bringing back cutscenes i've been waiting for the good cutscenes to come back this is before i saw anything except for you know the trailer and there was there was a bit of cutscene style stuff in the trailer i was like yes i can feel it like the music's on par with this game uh, this expansion the music is like on par i'm telling you it's it's immersive this music and then the the way that they rolled out everything is just like i could tell i could tell and i have this gift i have this natural gift i don't know maybe some people will will say it's bullshit but i have this natural gift to when I watch a trailer, be able to tell if something's going to be good or not. It really depends how they put it together, and generally, I've been correct. Now, remember, when I say this, and I say generally I've been correct, it's usually because it's based on my preferences. And that doesn't mean a lot of people don't have my same preferences as well, and my same interests. I think my, my perspectives are relatable especially when it comes to people playing guild wars 2 they're usually playing it for similar reasons that i am because it's a specific type of game but anyway back to the story i remember after i posted something about that someone was like uh we don't know it's gonna be good or not like we can't tell from the trailer that there's gonna be like any more cutscenes. like i don't believe it bro just chill bro seriously the level of how wrong that person was at that time just unbelievable this game like the the, the cutscenes are back they're back the good cutscenes are back i'm telling you with one caveat i will say just note just just keep in mind this is an mmo they do love to focus on story with this company this they do that's their thing that's one of their things and that's obviously why i play it obviously why a lot of people play it but there is a focus on open world too so it's not like we're going to get cutscenes like God of War. Just keep that in mind. But we do get cutscenes back, and they are back similar to back to Season 4 and the Joko stuff, the, the whole Joko arc. It's similar to that, and that's why this is so good now. It's just, they, they brought it back. Okay, I don't know what it is about my timing when I'm filming Guild Wars, but for some reason, it's always nighttime when I'm filming. 
I just want it to be daytime. Why? Why does it have to be so dark all the time? It does look a bit magical. With all these, like, glowing firefly things in the sky. You know what? I'm not going to complain anymore. It's fine. So let's talk about the masteries now. What they've done is they've added three new mastery lines. Oh, and keep in mind, I'll just make another uh, disclaimer, that this Janthier Wilds expansion is not complete. There's still a few more releases to go, so this is a semi-early review of the release. But it's the initial release, and you get the two maps with this release, and there's a big focus on the story and the maps, and one of the maps doesn't even have a meta, which is amazing, which is this map here. It's just like you can roam around, do tons of events you can do, and there's just so much stuff you can still do in here with unique, interesting events too. It doesn't need a meta. And I, that's one of the things that I really wanted out of Guild Wars 2 is another map, or at least a few maps that don't have metas in it, that don't feel timed, and the map's going to close. Oh no, I can't do this. Or like... I'm doing a Cryptids event right now and in Omnitas and oh no, the map just closed. Wait, no progress for that Cryptids event, just wasted time. Why am I doing it? Why am I bothering? Okay, a little bit of a, a rant on metas there, but yeah, they've, they've done another map with no meta. Amazing. So on to the masteries, they've added three and they're probably going to be adding more, I'm assuming, when they release the new updates. They've added a Warclaw one where you can train different features of the Warclaw up. They've added a Lowland Coden themed one, which is more like map themed. The first one lets you wield the spear. You kind of have to like earn it before you can wield it, basically. Which is cool. I like, I like the way that they've done these things in this expansion. It's really good. It's sort of progressive in a way that you want. And then there's a homesteading one. Obviously, this expansion release a brought to the game player housing system called homesteads now homesteads you may have seen my previous video it's not quite for me i did try it and it's not really my thing it's more for people who have maybe perhaps done everything maybe if i've done everything in the game then i'd be more interested but i'm not that interested because i have a lot of stuff to do in the game still and collect like legendaries lots of legendaries i want to do it just feels like I'm wasting my time a little bit in there. Perhaps once I do this, I can go in there and collect quickly with the special collection boxes. It lets you collect everything in one button press. So that's cool. Saves a lot of time instead of going to your, your home instance. But as you unlock more of these, you basically get more recipes unlocked and you can build more furniture and more decorations and stuff like that. So it is a cool, it's a good system. It's a cool system. It's just not super interesting for me right now. That's all I really have to say about homesteads and masteries, I guess. There are a plethora of mastery points available. You'll have no trouble finding your mastery points in this game. Now, let's let's quickly hop over to the second map, Janthier Sintry. Now, this map is the map with the meta. Now, as far as I'm aware, this map does not close at all when the meta finishes. So that's great news for anyone doing anything anywhere in the map when the meta is done. Again, it's nighttime, so you can't really see everything, and it's raining here for some reason. I don't know if it's always raining in this spot. Okay, I moved us to a little hilltop with, well, no view whatsoever, pretty much. So what they've done is they've added some new collectible nodes. Got some new materials released in here. Yeah, they've just added a, a bunch of new stuff to be honest. Also, I'll show you in the wizard's vault, there is or was, well, I think I can't show you now, but, oh, I can, yeah. So, this thing is sold out, but Falling Star Quest License. You pay a thousand wizard's vault tokens, or whatever they are, to get a special quest. So, in this expansion, what they've done, which is really cool, and they, I feel like they should really try to reorganize the other expansions like this but if you click into Janthier Wilds you've got Janthier side stories if you click that there's a bunch of different stories you can do that build upon the lore in Janthier Wilds and they're specifically for stories and there's specifically more obviously stories that you can play through that I believe do have voice acting as well 
so they're quality side stories now and they I'm pretty sure nowhere else in this game did they have this type of thing there's no, there's no side stories here 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 there's just side stories <laughs> separately in here now these are all side stories for the uh, living world area but what they should do is they should label side stories in each of the other expansions here because we do know we know obviously there are side stories in here there are they exist in the expansions here the other expansions but it's not obvious which ones they are or where they are and which ones are worth doing so that's why this is so good having this side story section here you know what to do to get more lore in the game and perhaps there is more lore to be had in the other achievements here but this particularly is for that area there and that's really cool that's a really cool addition so if you just hop into my hero panel here I'll just show you that there is a relic here I believe this is a new relic and they've added new relics to this expansion obviously they've added some other new items like these collecting tools there's a lot of new skins for spears probably more on the way there's very likely some skins coming for the war claw but unfortunately there are none yet as of yet in here but you know that they will you know that they'll do it so I'll just quickly give you an overview of both of the maps. The first map release is called Lowland Shore. It, bo and by the way, both of these maps are really big. They feel huge when you're walking around. They feel huge. So you've got the wizards area here, the wizards like moon camp thing. You'll find out about that through the story and how and or why it's there. You've got a giant field over here. You've got, um, I think three hearts in this map, three hearts in both maps. See, it's quite big. Uh, what they've done to travel across to Jantan Sentry is there is a portal over here on this side of the map to go over here. I did see some people complaining that you didn't have to cross Janther Bay, but maybe that is for another time because that is a massive, massive area. So perhaps there will in the future be a portal to this area, then crossing it, then entering here. And then you've got Janther Sentry. Also a very huge map, as I said, we are here right now. There is some cool bloodstone stuff happening here. There's a lot of lore to go through here. There's a lot of things to read. I haven't really read fully everything, but there's just so much stuff. There's so much stuff going back to Saul D'Alessio and the Mersat. There's just so much. Now I guess we'll talk about the meta and if I have some footage, I will put it in right here, but basically in the meta, you're fighting one of two titans that have re-emerged into the land of Jamthir and are threatening everything that the Codans hold dear. This is very unfortunate, and there is a crazy reveal at the end with another one, and that is really cool, and you don't expect it. Again, you, you I mean, you kind of want it to happen, but you, it's not it's not happening. It's only the very end you realize this, and you're like, Ooh, boy, there's stuff happening. There's big stuff coming. A much bigger stuff coming much bigger stuff this is just a taste of what's coming i think for janthir and then the, the next releases are going to be popping so yes basically you're fighting one of two titans and you have to choose which one you want to fight everyone kind of has to split into one of those two they are on the same map obviously but just different areas of the map and you have to kill both of them at the same time i've done it once or twice maybe only once actually now that I think about it, but it's still fun. It's a fun meta. I'm just not as interested in doing meta. I, I have this like bad meta taste in my mouth from Soto, even though the meta is good or, you know, it's, it's a simple meta and it's, it has some mechanics and it's nice. It's, it's a nice meta. It's not annoying or anything like that. It just feels nice to roam around again and, and feel like I'm discovering stuff with the the journey can finding treasures doing different adventures it's fun to just go around and explore here i feel like i can explore again it's just it's just such a good feeling now janthir sentry is much more dangerous than the lowland 
What was it? What was the name of this? Like? <laughs> There's only a um, minimal amount of enemies on Lowland Shore. Jante Sentry is full of enemies and full of titans pretty much everywhere, aside from a few other different types of enemies. Speaking of different types of enemies, there's a timber timber wolf right there. This is a lot, lot more things to collect. As I said, a lot of more new enemies that are fun. All the titans are very fun to fight. They have a very big focus on slow, the slowing effect. And that has never really been explored, I think, to this extent. That this much on enemies, that they just endlessly apply slow to you. And you have, to, you have to negate it, you have to avoid it. You have to figure out how these enemies fight. And it's fun to figure out a new enemy. And what else is there to talk about? They also have a new reward system. They have new ways to earn rewards, new ways to get keys for chests. They're fun ways once you figure out how it works and once they reduce the amount of bugs in some of the events, which they have been, for the most part, they've been sorting it out. It's a fun system and it's fun to gather the new materials. And it's just, it's a, it, overall, it's just a really fresh experience. It just feels fresh and new. And it feels like, it's, it doesn't feel like it's been done before. It just feels so fresh. That's, that's, that's what I'm labeling this expansion, fresh. Now, it's obviously not perfect. It could have been a little bit better in some certain aspects. So what I'm gonna rate this is 10 out of 10 on the freshness scale. That's a scale that I just came up with. It's 10 out of 10. On the overall experience of this, I would say eight or nine out of 10, just because of some bugs, which sometimes can't be helped so I, I can't really I don't know if I should really knock them down for that and overall look I'm gonna I'm gonna be generous here perhaps I'm not sure if, if this is generous or not and maybe a lot of people won't agree with me however I think overall the feeling the vibe the story perhaps maybe they could have done this like there's certain certain aspects of the story you'll know what I'm talking about when I say this but there's certain aspects of the story like filling up a progress bar that could have been negated by them just not adding that portion perhaps or you know changing it a little bit but overall the whole the whole thing my experience I couldn't put it down so I'm gonna say it's been a 10 out of 10 for me they've brought it back down to ground level even though there are some things still that are kind of trickling down from Soto, I think they've really brought it home with this expansion. They brought it back to how it used to feel, I think, but it's better. It's better than it used to feel. It's better than when the first of this original game released. It's better than the other expansions, in my opinion. And it just, it's just so cohesive and solid. I think it's, that that is a good word for it. It's a solid, cohesive, release and i could not say that for soto i could not and i think a lot of people couldn't say that even with the releases after that i still couldn't say it i'm hoping this trend continues with the rest of this expansion and it probably will be because i think they've learned a lot it really shows how much they've learned from soto after going through this expansion release compared to soto it's on another level that is that is the truth if you want to disagree with me in the comments I don't know what side the comments are on nowadays. Do it, but I will fight you because this is a great expansion and you cannot tell me otherwise. Okay, technically you can tell me, but I won't believe it. That is going to be my review or semi-short review of the game so far, this far. And I hope to do one at the very end when they've released the, entire, the entirety of this expansion. I hope that was somewhat cohesive in, in my own review as well as much as the expansion is cohesive and, and and solid you know what go go play this please go play bring some more players see you in my next video bye